was very... Well, Lou, you especially, why didn't you see through this report? The Bureau agents on this assignment followed their target, Vladimir Gusikov, KGB officer, for four hours. And he goes out to lunch, alone, sits on a bench in a mall, watches some children play with their toy boats after four hours. What do the agents do? They decide that Vladimir is just playing hooky from his job, and they decided to discontinue the surveillance. All that that tells us is that they wanted to be sure to get back to the office in time for their carpool. You are the fourth floor. You're supposed to be the best analyst we have. You're supposed to know KGB tradecraft. One of their policies is that all officers must dry clean themselves every four hours, for at least four hours. Do nothing at all for four hours, just in case they might be being watched. Our idiots must have abandoned Vladimir just around the time he was getting ready to go operational. Bulu, couldn't you read through the lines on this report? You're right. I was asleep at the switch. It won't happen again. All three of you signed off on it. Memorize this now. The KGB have policies. They follow them religiously. Policies are constraints on behavior. Constraints create patterns of activity. Patterns can be noticed. Nice move. So intent on his attack, you blindsided him. Walter, you may wind up the best analyst we have. Bob, sorry if I kept you waiting. You can blame Ronnie. Our good president had me in for a minute to tell me how much he likes how the Bureau is interfacing with the Oval Office these days. I'm still shaking. I guess you brought it off. It's no surprise to me. Mike, I came over to tell you how much I miss you on the fourth floor. Oh, come on, I'm going to be back in six weeks. So, you came over here for a reason. What's so important that I can't wait? Mike, it's going on eight years for me at the Bureau. And there's no traction under my feet. I see. You're still the unhappiest man on the fourth floor, huh? Come on, Bob, don't be ridiculous. You've got plenty of traction. Look, we all know your worth. You're the brightest guy I got. Well, thank you, but if that's true, what's holding me back? Okay. You're going to have to learn how to dumb down a little bit. You can't shove your smarts in everybody's face. Alienates people. You're going to have to learn to improve your uh, people skills. You do not want to alienate the guys who are close to the director who can help you. A lot of those men aren't as smart as they ought to be. Fine, they aren't as smart as they ought to be. Learn how to suffer fools in high places. That's how you get ahead. I can't agree in the Bureau. It's our duty to be bright. Okay, look, Bob. No, stupidity is a choice. Deep down, people choose to be stupid. It gives them power over other people, ugly, negative power. How dare these guys occupy high offices if they're not obsessed 
being capable enough to fulfill their tasks. Why should I pander to people like that? Bob, you're a master of technology, and you have been a whiz at budget forecasting. And I gotta say, you've been absolutely brilliant at finding new ways to classify targets. And you gotta get real. You are a fourth floor expert, not a warrior. Warriors run the FBI. My father was a warrior. And so am I. Bob, if you don't learn how to sell yourself a little better, your chances of getting ahead are nil. Special agent of the FBI, I accept the obligation to consider the information coming into my knowledge as a sacred trust. And any direct or indirect disclosure by me of any of this information I understand can cause irreparable damage to the United States. I do. Men, there are a few key words we pay a lot of attention to. You look so handsome. Words like bravery, fidelity, integrity, honor. Get in there, honey. Get in there. It's a blessing. If it's you, boss of this little operation. I just want to welcome you aboard. How do you do, sir? So, are you comfortably installed yet with the wife and kids? Three children, right? Yeah. Yes. And I hear there's a fourth on the way. I just want you to know, Bob Hansen, that there is wiggle room for advancement here. I can use a fellow who's a real true gung-ho type in his approach to office matters. Well, sir, I like to think of myself just that way. Well, once again, welcome aboard. I'm gonna keep a good fatherly eye on you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, we lost our guy. We lost Grzynski. This is the second one lost today, Bunky. He's going to be very mad. All right, just relax. The truth is, uh, two of my guys didn't show. One was sick. The other said it was cockamamie to work on a Sunday, so I was alone. And I lost my target. Why don't you come and shoot me? Look, it's over. You might as well come have a drink with me. I don't drink very much. Oh, fine. You can watch me drink. Well, Bob, we're good people. We work hard. <laughs> Reasonably hard. We even get things done if we can do them in a way that we're used to doing them. We're not too ambitious on our own. <laughs> but you. You've been suckered in by Bunky. What are you saying? Well, you know, Monkey's gonna be uh, leaving in a year or so. 
So I wanted to pull off the last big one to get a promotion, a larger retirement. And why isn't he here with me? Well, as you know, that's what you should worry about. I mean, <laughs> since the operation didn't work, he will now disassociate himself from it. Why did he choose me? <laughs> well, because he can spot that blue flame that is dying to come out of your ass. Bob, you're too ambitious. Learn how little you can do and who you're doing it with. For Sue. Thanks, Grandpa. And this is for you, oh, Jane. Grandpa. Nice. Now go on up and play. We'll open the presents. I got later. something special for your mother. <laughs> I've got something in the oven. Okay, Bonnie, what's this all about? Okay, Howard. We have to talk fast because Bob gets home soon from work. This sounds good. Howard, do you realize every time you visit us, you ridicule Bob? It's just my way of talking. Well, it's got to stop. You make fun of him right in front of the kids. Your dad's not a G-man, you say. He's, he's a bookkeeper. Look, I'm, I'm not here to squabble. I bought you a gift, beautiful. Please? Don't be shy. Open it. <laughs> gifts? You call these filthy, dirty things gifts? Hey, I'll give you the receipt. Trade them in on a pair of white cotton panties. No, that's enough. I've had enough! not expose my children to your ridicule of their father. Don't come back and see us unless you're willing to change. Look, how are you going to get along without a little moolah from me? Sugar, you are going to be looking for Howard Hansen's handouts all your life. All right, Howard. Bob might be a spendthrift, but he's a fine human being, and you do everything in your power to diminish him. Why? Because he doesn't live up to... Your idea of what a son should be. You and your money, get out of our house. Fathead. Fathead, I'm leaving. And when Bob finds out what you've done, he'll puke all over the dotted line. Ow! I don't care if I never see you again! It's the best workout I've had in a week. Ah! You will write your father and tell him that if he continues to insult you in front of your children, he's not to visit here again. I thought you said that to him already. Are you going to write? You know what you're asking. It has to be done. Now go and do what you failed to do at your birthday party. Go pin the tail on the donkey. Go ahead. No. No. It's a top double crossing world outside. Get dizzy. Warriors don't lose. Do that to our Daddy, stop! Ah. The only way to stop, we think the world is the wind! Stop crying, suck it up! Stop crying, suck it up! Dad, no matter what happens in our lives, you can be sure we'll never ask you for another penny. Robert and Bonnie.
me that piece of paper you just tried to hide. Oh, you don't need Give to see to that. What is it? It's an FBI official document. No, it's not. It's something else. What? Another woman? How can you say <laughs> that? You know I'm faithful. I believe you. But I don't. There is something going on. No. Something in you. Tell me. Tell you what? Tell me. Nothing what? to do with another yeah, woman. Let I swear. Me see no. The no. Let me see. Bonnie. Bonnie. <laughs> We'll lose the baby. What does this mean? If you want more information, I can supply it. What is this? Let me see all of it! Bonnie. If you stop. Tell you all about it. I've been doing this for us. I put together some worthless information. The t Penny Annie stuff is total trash, and I. I mailed it to the GRU. The Soviet intelligence organization. And they came back. With enough money for us not to have to go to my father. Oh, Bob. Oh, Bob. I did this for us. What are you saying? I did it for us. You can go to jail for selling information to the Soviets. What are you thinking? We have to go see our priest. First thing tomorrow. Might they have been trying to entice you further? Definitely. They were offering this easy money for just that purpose, but I'm never going near them again. That's my vow to God. Vow to God is binding. I can accept such a vow. But we have another matter. We have to discuss it. The money you obtained must be given back to charity. Well, Father, I did this in the first place because we were seriously in debt. All that money's been used to pay off debts. All the same, you must find a way to give an equal amount of charity from your present income in the months ahead. What about Opus Dei? We're the most devout Catholics. We work every day for God. Yes. I, mean, I couldn't agree more. I revere Opus Dei to work as apostles in our daily lives. That is, it is beautiful. And it is practical, but I'd rather give the money to Mother Teresa. Why, Bob? Why? Because Mother Teresa takes in dying people off the streets of Calcutta. She brings them to her hospice. She can't afford medicine for them. She and the sisters just take care of them gently until they pass away. Why? Because she doesn't want people to go out of this existence with a curse against God in their hearts. What could be more important? Bob. Sometimes you're the most spiritual person I know. Excuse me, Father. for the next two years. There's no way out. I have to continue with the Soviets. But I swear, once it's all paid off, I will never spy again. Never! Okay. Ready? Come on, Janie, up here. One, two, three. Oh, I love that footbridge back yeah, there. Yeah, that's my favorite place. Sometimes in the evening, I imagine I'm over there and some KGB man makes his drop right there. <laughs> and I'm ready. <laughs>
with my trusty PPK, and I collar, collar the guy. <laughs> Dream on. No, well, it's a joke, but Jack, you know, it, it is really not a joke. I mean, at the Bureau, we are obsessed with how sensitive our material is, how much it may be worth to the KGB. Is that what they think about over there, selling that stuff? Never. My, my lord, never. That would be betraying your colleagues, and who could be tempted to do that? But let me tell you about my obsession. I wake up at night worrying. The White House is 10 miles from this home. A nuke there would wipe us out, too. I get into this crazy logic. I say to myself, if the Soviets were a little better off, maybe they wouldn't be so desperate. Well, what makes you think they're that desperate? <laughs> we have it so much over the Soviets, I'm saying. We can watch. Ivan or Pavel or Dmitry when he makes a pass at his secretary. And photograph him in the act? <laughs> get around to that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll send you the pictures when we do. <laughs> you know, I've been asking myself why we persist in exchanging these titty photos. <laughs> I mean, we're big boys. Now maybe we should stop. Uh, uh. Yeah, I agree. Jack, I do agree. I'm getting tired of going to confession and admitting that I still beat the dummy. Yeah, well, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about giving that up. <laughs> <laughs> as beautiful. Does it mean that much to you? It does, it does. If it pleases you so much. I so want to please you. I adore you. I will always adore you. But right now I'm mad for you. I love your desire to please me. Bonnie may just want to expose herself. You know, I keep thinking about that time I got you to look at her in the shower. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I've been thinking maybe we should... What? Hey, well, listen, whatever you're thinking, just uh, don't, Bob, because... Well, this could hurt our friendship. Never. I don't know how I feel. Bonnie is so beautiful. I just... And I want to thank all of you here from the Department of Justice, FBI headquarters, and the FBI counterintelligence for the job you've all done in assembling the evidence to convict John Walker of espionage. When we do get the horses together, it's awesome what we can do. Awesome. People out there would know what it is like when the FBI is given the signal to surge on an individual. Mm -hmm. They would never attempt espionage in the first place. Mike, do you have a minute? Yeah, I'm running late, but I'd like to talk about a budget item that I'm having problems with. Budget item? Yeah. How do I explain a mysterious item 
of 250 million when it has to be footnoted in our public report to Congress. I'm sure you'll find a way. And then there's bills for workmen injured by methane fireballs. Methane, methane fireballs? Fireballs are what you get when you dig a tunnel under swamp soil, say, for example. I see. Say, uh, for instance, out on Wisconsin Avenue. I'd like to say, I don't know where the tunnel is going, but I do. The new Soviet embassy is being built on Wisconsin Avenue. I, uh, I can't tell you whether you're right or wrong. But when uh, Reagan signed the order, he wrote in the margins, good idea. Don't get caught. Well, you got caught. Even they got no running game. They got nothing going on at all. The whole thing is. Check this out. <laughs> hey, Digger. Digger? Yeah, you look like Digger Odell. <laughs> Who's he? We're going to watch television? I make a point of not watching it. Ah, well, uh, if you ever break down, pal, you should check out the late night reruns of The Great Gildersleeve. Digger Odell. Friendly Undertaker, very funny. Well, thank you for that information. We're not a... They go too far. They have no idea who they're dealing with. Ready for a little Quantico shoot, Hanson? Want to make sure to keep your gun pointed in the right direction. Yes, I know, not a soul in counterintelligence knows what to do with a handgun. Uh, you can always show me that I'm in error. Here's your scenario. You've chased these two perpetrators into this wooded area. Now you've got to take them out. Beware, there may be a third gunman behind that tree. Bell rings, you start shooting. Yes, James Bond, you're good at shooting dummies, but do you have the guts to kill a real man? To cross that line? Bob. Parent teacher conference at my kids' school. You're not, you're, you can't be late for that. Oh, no. Thanks, Louie. <clears throat> Hi, Bob. Mr. Cherkushin, I send you this letter via Mr. Degtiar. Soon I will send a box of documents to him. They are from certain of the most sensitive projects of the U.S. intelligence community. All are originals to aid in verifying their authenticity. I believe they are sufficient to justify a $100,000 payment to me. 
Details regarding payment and future contact will be sent to you personally. My identity and actual position in the community must be left unstated to ensure my security. Further, I must warn you that your service has recently suffered some setbacks. Mr. Sergei Motorin, Mr. Boren Yuzhin, and Mr. Valery Martinov have been recruited by our special services. Ramon Garcia. I have no idea why he chose me to give this to you. I'm supposed to be a diplomat. Yes, I know what you're supposed to be. I should not have been brought into association with you. To use the American expression, it could blow my cover. <laughs> we are much too pure over here in Washington. Hmm? Show me an American embassy anywhere that is not stuffed with the CIA officers. I repeat, this is a serious matter. This could lead to diplomatic ruptures. Dear Mr. Dedyar, if your correspondent is able to deliver what he promises, then he chose you precisely, because he's high enough to know that my personal mail is examined by the FBI, and yours is not. And if he is not genuine, what if the FBI is studying my mail? In that case, you will be embarrassed. And I will be embarrassed. My advice is to stay calm, okay? When the package arrives at your house, just bring it in, pronto. Why you flew into Moscow this morning? Leonid, I'm prepared to embrace this new fellow, Ramon. Victor, you're ready to give credence to a paper which discloses that the Americans have penetrated our most secure diplomatic facility in the United States? Total electronic penetration? Ramon is saying that we will find no bugs in our embassy. Yet the Americans can listen to everything. Details of the penetration of our supply transmissions. He explains the methods used and even gives the location of the device. And you believe something this important comes from a spy with whom we have no personal contact? My job is not to say yet to every possibility that comes our way. Of course, I can recognize the best way to succeed in our noble organization is to make no mistake. What if American intelligence is giving away this incredible piece of information, this gilded sugar plum? Because they have something better in mind. What if they're looking to embarrass General Secretary Gorbachev badly? Don't forget, the Perestroika is a pain in the ass to American warmongers. So, Victor, I'm not ready to say this gift is genuine. Leonard, look at the product. Ramon has sent us original documents. <laughs> if this adventure by CIA or FBI, we don't even know that, is as big as it seems to be, and they might send even original documents. Anything and everything to support their provocation. So, take a chance. Speak your doubts as you wish when you discuss this here at Moscow Center. But allow me to be able to send my separate reaction. And what if we decide against your position? Then, finito. Let's go. You think turning air conditioning up will keep an FBI man from hearing what we say? My method is crude for fellas, but crude methods can also be effective. All right, boss. What can you tell me about Ramon? Probably comes from FBI counterintelligence. But I still have no face-to-face -face with this fellow. Love, but not kisses. Just money. What did we decide about money? 
He wants 100,000. Moscow has to give him 50,000. Never spoil a good fellow with too much money. Never. Yes, he will buy another car and a boat. Next, he'll want an airplane. I, I will write to him. Don't even buy a second car. Don't attract attention. He will write back, I am sorry, I already bought a boat. Next time when I ask, what about your boat? He will say, forget boat. I bought plane. <laughs> <laughs> Having fun? Remember, this is not circus. Ramon gave us the names of three of our KGB officers who were working for the Americans. Осужденный Моторин на выход. Приговор окончательный, обжалованию не подлежит. Осужденный Моторин, вам понятен приговор? Следуйте за мной. Он мертв. And it is crucial that we never forget the social contract, which, as we know, is the foundation of morality. It has been almost a decade since our voice of... Okay. I give you veto power over my radio. Walter, the woman is a fool. Morality has nothing to do with this so-called social contract. We are moral when we feel that there is holiness in the air and everything you do counts. That sounds a touch narcissistic Nothing to me. Nothing narcissistic about it. God wants us to love and serve him. Well, how can you know what God wants? You can feel it in your hearts and you can know exactly what God wants. Okay. What station does he want you to listen to? Ha ha ha. Let there be light FM? Sorry. Hey, Bob. Could you download me a translation of this Vestia from the 17th? I hear they uh, printed something about China beginning trade with Russia. Magic fingers. Date? Uh, 27th. You've got the touch. Thank you. <clears throat> drops in the distant suburbs. Our agencies know your preferences, so these locations are insecure. I suggest we use the original site. Ramon. Signal to you, one vertical mark of white adhesive tape on a signpost means I have left a package for you and am ready to receive your payment in return.
when you have reviewed the contents sent and left your payment, you put up your signal to me, one horizontal mark of white adhesive tape, meaning drop filled. Recognize that I am dressed in a business suit and cannot be expected to receive your packages at locations where there is inch deep mud. And please don't put so much pepper on your package. I know it keeps the dogs away, but you are putting on too much. Note that when I have received your payment, I will then remove your horizontal tape. This is the door to a splendid family that will live here. If I didn't know you meant every word of it, I'd say don't put a jinx on it. <laughs> Bob, you're not. Absolutely not. You made a vow to God, remember? I'll never forget. <laughs> Word is the Soviets are going to invite uh, Castro to Moscow. We're going to need a report on how China might react to such a visit. You know, I might need some input from the CIA on this. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Mm. Our friends over there at the uh, CIA say there's a mole over here. I don't believe that. They would do anything to cast suspicion on us. Yeah, I know. Read through these uh, defective summaries, see if you can find anything. Once I've read these, I'll write a top secret report, one copy to Mike top secret, one copy to my KGB drop. Both sides will feel enriched. I am happy, only when I am working. Got my best for both sides at once. Let the cops get better and the crooks get better. Then, you have an interesting society. Fewer fools. Is it too much to ask for that? He says, important top secret document enclosed. Sent to Moscow Center right away. Who does he think he is? He is bypassing us. Extraordinary. <clears throat> These papers say that the Americans are digging a tunnel here in Washington underneath our new embassy, allowing for another penetration of our walls. <sighs> I don't believe it. He also gives up the entire plan that ensures the continuity of the US government if attacked by a nuclear power, which missiles they'll fire first in retaliation and how an interim government will function if necessary. and even where it will operate from. This is fantastic. Huh? Send it now. Oh, and don't delay paying him. It's nice for once to have a spy who is worth the money. It's not impossible. There could be a mole here in the bureau in the woodwork. Well, would you say that's likely, Bob? I wouldn't go that far, Mike. There are a few unexplained Soviet moves. A few KGB men who've been working for us have been executed. What the hell are you talking about, Bob? There's nothing in our woodwork. That there is a mole. Is it the CIA? That's what I think. That's the likelihood. Um, but we can't be certain. Well, there's no FBI agent would ever be that kind of scumbag. I agree, boss. It's not in our culture to betray a trust like that. Uh, I am amazed. Like Sometimes detached from others. I live in a land of ice and mirth and exquisite privacy. <laughs> Jack. Happy Fourth. Yeah. 
wait a minute. This is for you and your family. Bonnie. What? Oh, this is exceptional. Yeah, it is. Chef. Sure. <laughs> wow. Every stripe is sewn together on this flag. And every star on both sides. Can we open it up? Yeah. Such fine work. Superb workmanship. Here, girls. Oh. Jane. Look at the sides. Oh. I'm going to get the camera. Oh. That's gorgeous, huh? OK, everyone. Right here. Big smiles. I understand you see the Chinese as a bigger threat to America than the Soviets. Down the road, yes. They've studied our methods with the Soviets. They know enough to do it differently. We're spending too much time with Blue. The Soviets are still the real threat. Mike, I have to make my point. We have no defense against anyone who thinks differently from the Soviets. We're like the Pentagon. We're always fighting the last war. Bob, our mandate is to concentrate on the Soviets. And what we have in place will work against the Chinese. But keep in mind, the Chinese have about six nukes. The Soviets have thousands. It doesn't matter. Can't you see it? We've bankrupted the Soviets. The only question there is how to keep their finger off the firing button. If any country ever does beat us, it won't be with nukes. It'll be with cunning and simplicity and less sophistication than our defenses. And you're saying we'll be looking in the wrong direction? Yes. When push comes to shove, the Bureau sees the Soviet Union as an adversary, and that's all. They, they are there to be defeated in a contest, but Opus Dei knows communists for what they are. They're, they're evil personified. You must come to a meeting. You'll see. You'll want to join. I really, really want you to come. Look, I'm, I'm sorry, Bob. I, I'm simply not a joiner. I, the Bureau is enough for me. Maybe you ought to try my phone. I already have. I hear you went to quite a retirement party last night. Yeah, it was a lively event. Where was it held? At Zanzibar on Wisconsin Avenue. Oh. It's a strip club, yes, but it wasn't that bad. It was just hero oh. people. I mean, we had a really good time. <laughs> I, I wouldn't call that a good time. Look, it, it wasn't about looking at women. It was just a, something for the fellas, that's all. I mean, it wasn't a sex thing. It was just a guy thing. The, the, the girls were like wallpaper in the back of the room. When you go into that place you are in effect paying the salary of each girl you are you, your money is inducing her to sin I don't have an answer for that don't try it is an occasion of sin
is your Coke. That's twenty-eight dollars and fifty cents, not including tax. Would you tell that young lady that I never expected to see such grace and beauty in a, a nightclub? I'll tell her. on the right, you better hurry because he was paying his bill. <sighs> okay. I wanted to thank you for the compliment. It meant much more than money. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, be back soon. What do you think I do for a living? They don't always ask me to guess. Oh. And I'm pretty sharp. But with you, I, I have no clue. What do you do? I work for the FBI. Yeah. You certainly seem very, um... <laughs> Mysterious. <laughs> Pornant. And <laughs> deadly. I don't want to scare you. I don't know if I believe you're the FBI. If you were, you'd have a card. I got a job for you. Can you help me find my father? Well, I'll need a, a few details. Well, I, I don't know any. He left when I was a baby. My mother married another man, truck driver. And after him, another guy. You don't want to know all this, all, do you? Yes, I do. Go on. Please. The second guy's the one that ran me off. So goodbye to Indiana. You can see how it would have made a huge difference for you if your real father had stayed. came once to visit. We went out to the garage where we had this old beaten up piano. And my dad turned to my mom and he said, could she play by ear? And my mom said, yep, she can do it. She's your daughter. So he marches me over to the piano and I did it. For a few minutes, we were playing together, and it was, it was, uh, man, it was wonderful. And then he turns to me and he says, he says she's mine. And that was it. That's all I ever saw of him. A tall, good-looking man. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I don't want to go on the road for a year. Things are good at home right now. If you don't do a tour with the inspection staff, there is no way you can move up to GS-15. I hate the idea. I'll be gone two, three weeks at a time. What was it like for you when you went on inspection? Truth? Had a good time and lost a wife. I don't understand. Why is it so important for you to get to grade 15? Because it's equal to a colonel. Oh, I get it. Colonel Hansen will outrank Lieutenant Colonel Hoshauer, huh? It's not about Jack. We need the money. Being a GS-15 will give us the money that we need to send the children to college. Oh, no, honey, not now. Look, Grandma Frances has said it also that to be a good Christian, to be a good person, you have to grow up living your life as an apostle for God. You can't watch silly TV shows. You have to live your life as an apostle for God, an everyday apostle. Honey, there has to be more commitment than that, even more. The world is always there to corrupt even our very best effort. Look at the Roman Empire. At its height, a truly degraded place, yet those early Christians understood that nothing could stand up to true holiness. Any awful world, no matter how hideous, can be changed. We just have to reach into the essential goodness that God has put in all of us. Those of us who believe have to become more holy, more pure all the time. Doesn't Bob just get right to the gist of it? Yes, that's quite the feat to get to the gist. Mm -hmm. Easy to say, but uh, difficult to do. Honey, there was some real exciting news at the office today. For us, they'll be giving me a special Hong Kong. This is my next inspection, and I can take you there with me. You always do a good job for them. Yeah, it is. It's kind of a reward. When the work is light, come with me. We'll have every evening together. Oh, I'd love to. I'd have... It would mean so much time away from the kids, right? Yeah, I guess you can't. But after Hong Kong, you can meet me in Hawaii. Hawaii? Do that at least for a week anyway. <laughs> Sounds expensive. Now don't worry. I've been saving up just for something like this. So beautiful. Thanks for inviting me. When you're up on the stage, dancing, what do you think about? I want all those men to pay huge attention to me without my having to say a word. I thought so. Do you know that that is the secret side of religion? <laughs> It is. Mm. Are you 
talk about hey. it later. Fabulous. Hey. Hi. How are you guys doing? Hey. What do you got there? That's really we'll nice. see you at church later. Yeah, sure. Okay. Bye bye. What a coincidence. Turn around. Turn around. Yeah. Turn around. Huh? What's she doing? I don't know. Turn around. Turn around. Hey. It's disgusting. evening. How about breakfast tomorrow? How about playing tonight? Some, uh, dancing and drinks? No, it's too late for me. Come on. Don't be so tight. I'm going. See you tomorrow. Want to convert me to the church? I like to convert you to a human being. doing that.
Got another smile for me? <laughs> This is the best vacation we ever had. <laughs> it's fabulous. It's better than ever. <laughs> I have received Moscow's communique and noted that they have asked that I provide names of a few people who might be appropriate for our kind of work. I'm afraid we have very little talent of that sort. The only name I can offer, the person you may be looking for, is an army officer with top secret clearance, now stationed in Germany. He has frequent contacts with Russian officers in GRU who work at his level. He is Lieutenant Colonel Jack Hoshauer and has been disaffected recently since he was told he would not be promoted to full colonel. What if they recruit Jack? Maybe he could become a real confidant. I need a confidant. For little things. The picky on worries. The ones that eat into the lining of your stomach. Except, except, if they hook up with Jack, they will learn my name. Who are you playing with? Them or yourself? Well, I have to thank you for this. Is it really a Mercedes waiting for me? Well, you can finish your dessert. We go outside and have a look. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, my God, it's a 380 SL. Oh, oh, it is so cute. Whenever you drive up in a Mercedes, anywhere at all, they won't ask you where you went to college. They won't ask you anything. They'll just treat you right. Mmm, I know that. <laughs> it was just a miracle to change my life. Would you stop here? Now that you have a car, will you promise me that you will come here to St. Catherine's this Sunday? This is where you and your family go. Every Sunday. There you go. You know, I'm beginning to feel half comfortable around him. He's much more impressed by you than he wants to allow. That's your doing. Bonnie, you know, I still never know what to expect. Hey, 
I hope you don't expect me to read these religious pamphlets you unloaded on me. Who knows, someday, maybe. Hey, son, forget about religion. It's for the worry birds. Hey, put that aside. I enjoyed my visit. Well, Dad, thanks for saying it. Now I gotta get back to the track. <laughs> Today, in Moscow, for the first time in over 70 years, communism's red flag was lowered over the Kremlin. To Western observers, the Russian Empire seems to have come to an end. The people of Moscow carry Russia's pre-Soviet flag from Parliament to Red Square. Wow. Yeltsin, what a Christmas president, present this Republic, is. <laughs> climbed on a tank and proclaimed, we are victorious. And we are victorious because our cause is just. I feel a dead drop to the Soviets nine days ago, and now their flag is coming down. What kind of trouble am I in? Gentlemen, this is the fourth floor intelligence division. Bob, congratulations on your GS-15. I'd like you to meet Mr. Bakatin. He's now the head of the new KGB. Yes. Now we have new name. No longer KGB. SVR, we are called. In English, Democratic Intelligence Service. And this is General Oleg Kalugin, who is retired from the old KGB. Now he's advising Mr. Bakatin on how to reorganize and democratize the new KGB. These are crazy times, are they not? <laughs> <laughs> we can agree on that. <laughs> Gentlemen, this way. Excellent. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Ah. Come on. What do you think? Fish for lunch. Hamburgers. Hey, did you know Kalubin's on the floor? Yeah. Just saw him. Amazing. <laughs> Fish and chips. A little malt vinegar. Hamburgers. In honor of the Brits. You know they hit a gold mine today. One of the major archivists in the KGB defected to them. Now there's a source who's going to have hundreds, maybe thousands of pieces of information. It's an analyst's dream. If you just think about all those spies, all the nightmares they'll have. <laughs> To say that I will be holy is to admit that I am terrified. It is unworthy of anyone who would seek to be master of two worlds. Oh, don't go rushing off, though. Stick around. You have a little extra to report in the box tomorrow.
I'm looking for Priscilla Gailey. Oh, Priscilla moved back to Columbus. Oh, I believe, man, she fell in love with a pimp out there. Who are you? I'm Reggie. I'm part of the Overgene. See that FBI agent? Hey, hey, we ought to talk, man. FBI guy! It's not a question of who we target, but of how much we're willing to back it with. Excuse me, Mr. Hansen. Hold on. The new administrative assistant on loan to us is downright difficult. She's young and very snippy. It's just what I need this morning. Yeah, I'm sorry, but we really need her cooperation. Yeah. I'll have to call you back, Norma. I thought the three of us could get together and, um... Establish a modus operandi. You're not my boss, Mr. Hanson. I'm on loan. Well, we know that, but we're engaged in a project where we have to work together. We have to cooperate. As I see it, cooperation's a two-way street. Of course. <laughs> I see no need to take orders if we're supposed to be cooperating. No, Kimberly, you don't really want to come in here with an attitude like that, do you? Attitude? First your secretary. And now you're trying to dominate my work, and you don't know anything about it. Excuse me? I'm late for my carpool. Come back here a second. I can't accept it. Five days of suspension. That's a week's salary. That's almost $2,000 and a record of this in my file. Bob, calm down. Just calm down. You're going to have to accept it. You're not a woman. You're not an African-American. You're a regular white guy. No cards to play. What about? The years I've given the Bureau the job that I've done for our country. I know the good job you've done. But you are just going to have to face a few new facts of life. Can you realize how painful it is to give up the idea that one day I would have had a high enough position to make a difference? True. It's all very true. A 100-pound girl lifts more weight in the Bureau than I can. Where's the justice? I won't be long. to get the credit card that I gave yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. Do you, do you want to come in? No, I'd rather not. Priscilla, it was our understanding that you would use the card for automobile expenses only. Car-related expenses? Yeah. But the monthly statement that came to my office showed other disbursements. I bought uh, clothes for my nieces this Easter. What 
I don't look nice for church. Isn't that religious related? I'm telling the truth. I'm sorry, it had to be car related. I didn't mean to make you mad. I'm not mad, I just have a plane to catch. Go get the car. Mr. Hanson. Yeah. I will never interfere with your personal life. I give you my word. I know, Priscilla. I trust you. I called you three times in office yesterday and twice on Thursday. I was out in the field. When do you go out into the field? Hey, can't you control your dog? FBI, don't come any closer or I'll shoot. Anyone ever teach you how to hang on to a leash? FBI, don't approach any closer or I will shoot. Look, it's just a warning violation. It's not a good thing to wave your gun around in the park. Next time, please keep your dog tethered at all times. That's why we have an ordinance. Thank you, officer. I was using it to protect us. You could have destroyed everything we've worked for all these years. God, Bob. I love you, but why are you so impulsive? Yes. Something still bothers me. What did I do wrong? Not, not you. Me. The driving test. In high school. Remember? Yeah. Yeah, I never have forgotten them. No. I bribed the guy. To flunk you. Three times. Ten bucks a pop. Why? Why, Dad? You get down. You were getting wise ass. Tell me now. Correct the record.
You got one thing straight. I love you, Bob. You got to keep coming back to D.C. for your research. Yeah, it is. And you know, my work on the Battle of Quezon may even produce a book. And for our part, it's just fun having you stay with us. Jack, in the glove compartment, there's a little box. Get it for me. Sure. I made that little thing. Standard electronic parts. Welcome to our new video camera. You're kidding me. What is this exactly what it is? Maybe the most advanced piece of closed circuit technology. Well, where's the lens then? Yeah. Lift up the picture. See it? Oh, yeah. No. That little pinhole. Oh, yeah. It looks like a cardboard box, but it transmits images as clearly as a camcorder. You made this? Yeah. I could put it up on a shelf in my bedroom tonight. You could get all the action on the TV in the guest room once everybody goes to sleep. Just turn on the set, any channel will serve. You're out of your mind. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I think we ought to try it. I'd like you to watch Bonnie and me make it look. I don't think so. What am I going to see? Anything your little heart desires. <laughs> oh, honey, don't take a night quill. Dad, I just feel so upset. Just everywhere, every newspaper, all over the television and magazines, just pornography. Everywhere. Come here, let me chase those devils. And there's pornography. And there's love. I love your apple pie, Miss Johnson. Aw, well, you could have cooked it a little longer, but... You know, I, um, I read this story in the Post today about uh, a television network show that tells the actors when they come in for an audition that they'll be filmed in full frontal nudity. We're gonna use those terms here. Jane tells me that when you're finished with law school, you're gonna apply to the FBI. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Well, I wouldn't recommend that. You wouldn't? No. Not after they let the women in. <laughs> oh, Dad. Oh, Dad, my eye. They even have to move the pistol targets in from 35 <laughs> feet to 7 feet so those young ladies can actually hit something. <laughs> Maybe I should think about CIA. <laughs> That is worse. Well, I guess I know how you feel about gays in the military. Richard, I better clue you in. We do not talk about homosexuals in this house. We look at it as equal to bringing evil into the room. And AIDS for sure is God's way of showing them the gates of hell. It is wonderful, Pi. It is.
Very, very nice. And Mrs. Trimber, if you could just turn this way just a little bit. That's very, very nice. Go back in here. Everybody look right up in here. Thank you very, very much. That's wonderful. Thank you. Very much. Well, Richard, I think you're going to be very happy in this family. I know I will. I love Jane so much. This is maybe not the best moment, but it's for you. Wow. It's so beautiful. I like it. Would you put it on? Sure. You know, God's never given me a cross larger than I could bear, and sometimes it makes me a little nervous thinking about how perfect my life has been. <laughs> but may your life with Jane be as perfect. Thank you. I know it will. Me too. <laughs> If you ever were in bed with Bonnie, what would you like to do? I'm not the man in the bed, Bob. No, you're not, but I'm sure you have some ideas on this subject. Yes, I do. I think we shouldn't talk about this. It could put a dent in our friendship. No, it couldn't. Never. Because I will tell you the truth. I'd like to see him making love to Bonnie. He would? And I'll tell you something else. You've been married for 30 years and you haven't had any kids. Bonnie should have your child. That is how close I feel to you. This kid has to grow up, you know. In secret, of course. This is ridiculous. Anyway, Bonnie would never go to bed with me. Have you ever heard about a drug called Rehypno? College guys give it to their dates, and the girls never remember a, a thing. We could slip some to Bonnie. And... Let's just drop this, okay, Bob? is the answer. Never forget to go to confession. It takes care of, it takes care of everything. Come what may, come what may, I'm in a dark forest and I don't know where danger is any longer. All I know is that I must go back, back to spying. That is the only way I can respect myself again. Well, I have to pay a terrible price. Am I in danger of, of hating God? Why is he so unwilling to release me from my demons? We express our sincere joy on the occasion of resumption of contact with you. 
You have become a legend to us. Now we can salute the living legend. The CIA has finally agreed the mole is likely to be one of their people. And we've targeted a particular officer of theirs who's had access to almost everything. I am the one they want. And they don't have a clue. It's a captain's paradise, it is. They used to be ordering our intelligence, standards. Before Perestroika? Yes. Then Yeltsin came with his wolves, stole everything. Yes. Banks, industry, honor. Wolves back. Even our KGB archive was plundered by these thieves. Our archive? What was stolen? The best stuff, what else? <laughs> Somebody said to himself, when I need 20 million dollars, this archive will become my passport to America. Does this include the material on Ramon? We can expect as much. Mike? Mike? I need to talk to you alone. You mind if I close this? Our, uh... Our suspect in the CIA is clean. After a year of surveillance, he's clean. The, the prints on that plastic bag, which has been sitting in Moscow Center for the last 15 years, they belong to Bob. Bob? Bob Hansen? Our Bob Hansen? Look, I've been looking for an explanation. I talked to the lab. I asked him, is there a way that you could transfer the print, say, from uh, glass to the plastic bag? It's, it's not impossible, but it would mean the print would be reversed otherwise, it's, and you would degrade the print, and we got over five points of confirmation. It's very unlikely. You know, if I were, uh, if I were working for the Russians, and I had to pick one FBI guy to discredit. You know who I would pick? Bob Hansen. That's what they've done. I went back and I read through all of the letters from Ramon to the KGB. There's one where there's this, this passage where he says, policies cause constraints. Constraints make patterns. Patterns can be noticed. That's right out of Bob's training speech. He said that to me personally. Did the lab guys clean up the tape yet? They're close. Uh... Isolate them. Uh, give them a new job with a, uh, with the title, that sounds good. Give him a nice new uh, corner office with windows. No access. OK, everybody, this isn't going to take very long. I uh, want to make a toast with the soda, of course, <laughs> to our new special assistant, the assistant director in charge of information resources. We're going to miss you, Bob. Mm -hmm. It's not every day that somebody gets their own private office on the seventh floor. Bob Hansen. Like I know my own. You know what we have to do. You alright, Bob? Something you want to talk about?
so thankful. George W. Bush is going to be our next president. Couldn't sleep all that terrible time in Florida when it looked like Gore might win. Anybody who voted for Gore ought to be shot. Oh, come on, Bob. You don't mean that. Very thought of Gore during to be president. Toadying up to that psychopath and sociopath Bill Clinton for eight years. Makes my blood boil. Most Catholics are cafeteria Catholics. They choose what they think might be palatable to them, but the Opus Dei makes you recognize what your duties in life are before you can serve God. Jane, yeah. I want you to remember your father loves you. Before I go to bed, I want you all to know that I love you. Target drove to Foxstone Park sign on Creek Crossing Road in Vienna, Virginia, shortly before 6 p.m., January 26, 2001. He came to a stop, exited his car, proceeded on foot, looked around, then re-entered his vehicle and drove away. Target returned home, parked his car, went into the house. Fifteen minutes later, bedroom lights went out. Pursuant to court authorization, subject's car was removed from 9414 Talisman Drive, Vienna, Virginia, and replaced with identical vehicle. As authorized by a search warrant, subject's car was opened. Among items found, seven classified and top secret documents taken from the offices of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Inside subject's glove compartment, Crayola colored chalk, marking colors, and two rolls of medical adhesive tape were found. Subject's car was returned. Operation completed. Sunday, February 18th. Subject drove retired Lieutenant Colonel Jack Hoshauer to Dulles Airport. Conversation recorded. My inability to convert you to Catholicism has been one of the real failures of my life. Well, I don't know. I, it's just not fair. I guess I have to confess that. <laughs> OK. I never pretended to understand you, Bob, and I guess there's no need to now. But OK, friend. All right. We're friends. But I'm going to give you this, this book we talked about. I've read that many times over. And it was Thursday. Coming in? Uh, uh, not today, Jim. Well, see you next time through. Thereafter, subject drove from Dulles Airport to Foxstone Park. Arrived at 4.34 p.m. Please, please, exactly where you are, dude, on top. Did you call my wife and tell her I'm okay? Who 
We'll take care of her. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. They say that J. Edgar Hoover used to dress up as a woman. You've got to have great opposites in yourself to do well at this kind of work. A special corps of policemen. Policemen who are also, also philosophers. philosophers. <laughs> oh, Bobby. Breaking news this hour. The FBI has arrested a special agent named Robert P. Hansen, alleged to have been spying for the Russians for more than 15 years. A spokesperson for the FBI says Hansen was responsible for the deaths of at least three Russians working for the FBI and that he made a fortune selling secrets to the KGB. Hansen allegedly gave the KGB more than 6,000 pages of classified documents along with 27 encrypted disks while being privy to top secret information from the CIA, the NSA, and the State Department, all of which was sent to his handlers in Moscow. You must think of yourself as 90% good, 10% bad. I'm more worried about you, Bonnie. I'm But now that we're back in her house, I'm going to stay as long as I can because that's where... Because that's where all my memories are, all my... All my happy memories. Only when I go outdoors do I feel any fear. You have nothing to fear outside. Why do you say that? Who would hurt you? You have such great tits. <laughs> Thought you'd never want to talk to us again. I don't reject them any more than you do. Listen, um, Bonnie, you need, you're gonna need a little something to tie yourself over. So I, um, uh, there's two thousand dollars here. No, please, it, it's all the cash I could put together at this point. <laughs> You're an angel. No, don't ever say that. Jack, I keep thinking there was another woman involved. Was Bab unfaithful to me? No. The way you say no, there's another woman. Bonnie. I'm... It's better that you hear it from me than you pick up the Washington Post one morning. Yes. Bob did take a girl to Hong Kong. But he swore to me that he never touched her. And uh, I believe him. Completely. He really wanted me to go to Hong Kong with him, but I couldn't because of the kids. And I... 
So I met him in Hawaii, and that week was like a fabulous honeymoon all over. It was so, yes, I believe he never touched her. I hope the Bureau understands this has nothing to do with his family. Mr. Hershauer is here. I'm not trying to protect Bob or myself. It's his wife. Uh, this hard drive would embarrass the hell out of her. There's nothing of intelligence value there. We'll see what's of value and what isn't. Could you please protect Bonnie in all of this? She's innocent. Well, that's for us to decide. Mom told us how your father used to treat you. I think that it's beautiful that you were never cruel to us. I never had the impulse. Not ever. Not toward you, Jane. With Lisa or Sue, I knew I had to break the cycle. Mom told us how happy your letter made you. Oh, I'm so grateful. <laughs> There's still so much love in the family. Richard needs to talk to you. Why? Someday, maybe I'll be able to give you the answer. Is there anything else? Don't pay any attention to that kind of stuff. It's not that big a deal. Jack said to tell you that um, the Bureau has taken his hard drives from his computer in Germany. They have it all. Father Bill, even in the light of everything I now know, I'm I'm still in love with him. I I come home from visiting Bob, and it's so clear. <laughs> I'm still in love with him. Bonnie, that's good. That is so good. Because your visits are crucial for him. Just suppose, what if Bob were to come down with cancer? Don't you think they'd let him out then? Bonnie. I know it won't happen now. Just later. Wouldn't they let him out? I could... 
nurse him then. I apologize for my behavior. I am shamed by it. Beyond its illegality, I have torn the trust of so many. Worse, I have opened the door for calumny against my totally innocent wife and our children. I have hurt them deeply. For all this, I stand ready to accept the sentence of this court. All right. Under a plea agreement, the sentence of the court, Mr. Hansen, is you be committed to the custody of the Attorney General to serve a term of life. Thank you, Your Honor. You asked me, Jane, why? Why did I do it, or why? as it happened. For my part, dear Jane, hubris, overweening vanity, feeling myself equal to God, bestowing good on both sides, but it's a nightmare of illusions for anyone seeking the truth, dodging between the problems and the principles. The price is high. Traitor, traitor, tell the truth. I was ready to kill and to die. It's a soldier's wager. Oh, God, if this is true, then maybe I am ready to be crucified for my sins and leave the rest to you. Not like our Lord Jesus, no. Never, but... see me at least as equal to the... good thief who was crucified with him, taken along in death with him in the forgiveness forever. And please, Lord, let him say to me also, this day shalt thou be with me in paradise. Can you drink of the cup I drink of?
Jack, I do agree. I'm getting tired of going to confession and admitting that I still beat the dummy. Yeah, well, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about giving that up. <laughs> <laughs> as beautiful. Does it mean that much to you? It does, it does. If it pleases you so much. I so want to please you. I adore you. I will always adore you. But right now I'm mad for you. I love your desire to please me. Secretly, Bonnie may just want to expose herself. You know, I keep thinking about that time I got you to look at her in the shower. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I've been thinking maybe we should... What? Hey, well, listen, whatever you're thinking, just uh, don't, Bob, because... Well, this could hurt our friendship. Never. I know how I feel. Bonnie is so beautiful. I just... And I want to thank all of you here from the Department of Justice, FBI headquarters, and the FBI counterintelligence for the job you've all done in assembling the evidence to convict John Walker of espionage. When we do get the horses together, it's awesome what we can do. Awesome. People out there would know what it is like when the FBI is given the signal to surge on an individual. Mm -hmm. They would never attempt espionage in the first place. Mike, do you have a minute? Yeah, I'm running late, but I'd like to talk about a budget item that I'm having problems with. Budget item? Yeah. How do I explain a mysterious item of 250 million when it has to be footnoted in a public report to Congress. I'm sure you'll find a way. And then there's bills for workmen injured by methane fireballs. Methane, methane fireballs? Fireballs are what you get when you dig a tunnel under swamp soil, say, for example. I see. Say, uh, for instance, out on Wisconsin Avenue. I'd like to say, I don't know where the tunnel is going, but I do. The new Soviet embassy is being built on Wisconsin Avenue. I, uh, I can't tell you whether you're right or wrong. But when uh, Reagan signed the order, he wrote in the margins, good idea. Don't get caught. Well, you got caught. I mean, they got no running game. They got nothing going on at all. The whole thing is... Check this out. <laughs> hey, Digger. Digger? Yeah, you look like Digger Odell. <laughs> Who's he? We're gonna watch television? I make a point of not watching it. Ah, well, uh, if you ever break down, fell, you should check out the late-night reruns of The Great Gildersleeve. Digger Odell. Friendly Undertaker, very funny. Well, thank you for that information. We're not a... They go too far. They have no idea who they're dealing with. Ready for a little Quantico shoot, Hanson? Want to make sure to keep your gun pointed in the right direction. Yes, I know. Not a soul in counterintelligence knows what to do with a handgun. 
Uh, you can always show me that I'm in error. Here's your scenario. You've chased these two perpetrators into this wooded area. Now you've got to take them out. Beware, there may be a third gunman behind that tree. The bell rings, you start shooting. Yes, James Bond, you're good at shooting dummies, but do you have the guts to kill a real man? To cross that line? Fulfill their tasks. Why should I pander to people like that? Bob, you're a master of technology, and you have been a whiz at budget forecasting. And I gotta say, you've been absolutely brilliant at finding new ways to classify targets. But you gotta get real. You are a fourth floor expert, not a warrior. Warriors run the FBI. My father was a warrior. And so am I. Bob, if you don't learn how to sell yourself a little better, your chances of getting ahead are nil. Special agent of the FBI, I accept the obligation to consider the information coming into my knowledge as a sacred trust. And any direct or indirect disclosure by me of any of this information I understand can cause irreparable damage to the United States. I do. Men, there are a few key words we pay a lot of attention to. You look so handsome. Words like bravery, fidelity, integrity, honor. Get in there, honey. Get in there. It's a blessing. Funky Fitzhugh, boss of this little operation. I just want to welcome you aboard. How do you do, sir? So, are you comfortably installed yet with the wife and kids? Three children, right? Yeah. Yes. And I hear there's a fourth on the way. Great. I just want you to know, Bob Hansen, that there is wiggle room for advancement here. I can use a fellow who's a real true gung-ho type in his approach to office matters. Well, sir, I like to think of myself just that way. Well, once again, welcome aboard. I'm gonna keep a good fatherly eye on you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, we lost our guy. We lost Grzynski. This is the second one lost today, Bunky. He's going to be very mad. All right, just relax. Truth is, uh, two of my guys didn't show. One was sick, the other 
said it was cockamamie to work on a Sunday, so I was alone. And I lost my target. Now you come and shoot me. Look, it's over. You might as well come have a drink with me. I don't drink very much. Oh, fine. You can watch me drink. Well, Bob, we're good people. We work hard. <laughs> Reasonably hard. We even get things done if we can do them in a way that we're used to doing them. We're not too ambitious on our own. <laughs> but you. You've been suckered in by Bunky. What are you saying? Well, you know, Monkey's gonna be uh, leaving in a year or so. So I wanted to pull off the last big one to get a promotion, a uh, larger retirement. And why isn't he here with me? Well, because, you know, that's what you should worry about. I mean, <laughs> since the operation didn't work, he will now disassociate himself from it. Why did he choose me? Well, well, because he can spot that blue flame that is dying to come out of your ass. Bob, you're too ambitious. Learn how little you can do and who you're doing it with. for us. I put together some worthless information. The penny ante stuff is total trash. And I... I mailed it to the GRU. The Soviet intelligence organization. And they came back. enough money for us not to have to go to my father. Oh, Bob. Oh, Bob. I did this for us. What are you saying? I did it for us. You can go to jail for selling information to the Soviets. What are you thinking? Go see our priest. First thing tomorrow. Might they have been trying to entice you further? Definitely. They were offering this easy money for just that purpose, but I'm never going near them again. That's my vow to God. Vow to God is binding. I can accept such a vow. But we have another matter. We have to discuss it. The money you obtained must be given back to charity. Well, Father, I did this in the first place because we were seriously in debt. All that money's been used to pay off debts. All the same, you must find a way to give an equal amount of charity from your present income in the months ahead. What about Opus Dei? We're the most devout Catholics. We work every day for God. Yes. I, mean, I couldn't agree more. I revere Opus Dei to work as apostles in our daily lives. That is, it is beautiful. And it is practical, but I'd rather give the money to Mother Teresa. Why, Bob? Why? Because Mother Teresa takes in dying people off the streets of Calcutta. She brings them to her hospice. She can't afford medicine for them. She and the sisters just take care of them gently until they pass away. Why? Because she doesn't want people to go out of this existence with a curse against God in their hearts. What well, could be more important? Sometimes you're the most spiritual person I know. Excuse me, Father. How can I afford to send $500 a month to Mother Teresa for the next two years? There's no way out. I have 
have to continue with the Soviets. But I swear, once it's all paid off, I will never spy again. Never! Okay. Ready? Come on, Janie. Up here. One, two, three. Uh, I love that footbridge back yeah, there. Yeah, that's my favorite place. Sometimes in the evening, I imagine I'm over there and some KGB man makes his drop right there. <laughs> and I'm ready with my trusty PPK. And I collar, <laughs> collar the guy. <laughs> Dream on. Oh, <laughs> well, it's a joke, but Jack, you know, it, it is really not a joke. I mean, at the Bureau, we are obsessed with how sensitive our material is, how much it may be worth to the KGB. Is that what they think about over there, selling that stuff? Never. My, my lord, never. That would be betraying your colleagues, and who could be tempted to do that? But let me tell you about my obsession. I wake up at night worrying. The White House is 10 miles from this home. A nuke there would wipe us out, too. I get into this crazy logic. I say to myself, if the Soviets were a little better off, maybe they wouldn't be so desperate. Well, what makes you think they're that desperate? <laughs> we have it so much over the Soviets, I'm saying. We can watch Ivan or Pavel or Dmitry when he makes a pass at his secretary. And photograph him in the act? <laughs> I've been around to that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll send you the pictures when we do. <laughs> you know, I've been asking myself, why we persist in exchanging these titty photos. <laughs> I mean, we're big boys. Now maybe we should stop. Uh, uh. Yeah, I agree. For Sue. Thanks, Grandpa. And this is for you, oh, Jane. Grandpa. Nice. Now go on up and play. We'll open the presents later. I got later. something special for your mother. <laughs> I've got something in the oven. Okay, Bonnie, what's this all about? Okay, Howard. We have to talk fast, because Bob gets home soon from work. This sounds good. Howard, do you realize every time you visit us, you ridicule Bob? It's just my way of talking. Well, it's got to stop. You make fun of him right in front of the kids. Your dad's not a G-man, you say. He's, he's a bookkeeper. Look, I'm, I'm not here to squabble. I bought you a gift, beautiful. Please? Don't be shy. Open it. <laughs> gifts? You call these filthy, dirty things gifts? Hey, I'll give you the receipt. Trade them in on a pair of white cotton panties. Enough. That's enough. I've had enough! not expose my children to your ridicule of their father. Don't come back and see us unless you're willing to change. Look, how are you going to get along without a little moolah from me? Sugar, you are going to be looking for Howard Hansen's handouts all your life. All right, Howard. Bob might be a spendthrift, but he's a fine human being, and you do everything in your power to diminish him. 
Why? Because he doesn't live up to your idea of what a son should be. You and your money, get out of our house. Fathead. Fathead, I'm leaving. And when Bob finds out what you've done, he'll puke all over the dotted line. Ow! I don't care if I never see you again! It's the best workout I've had in a week. You will write your father and tell him that if he continues to insult you in front of your children, he's not to visit here again. I thought you said that to him already. Are you going to write? You know what you're asking. It has to be done. Now go and do what you failed to do at your birthday party. Go pin the tail on the donkey. Go ahead. No. No. It's a top double crossing Stop. world outside. Get dizzy. Stop. 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 Warriors don't lose. Daddy. Do that to our Daddy, stop! Ah. No way to stop! We think the world is the wind! Stop crying! Suck it up! Stop crying! Suck it up! Dad, no matter what happens in our lives, you can be sure we'll never ask you for another penny. Robert and Bonnie. Give me that piece of paper you just tried to hide. Oh, you don't need Get to see that. What is it? It's an FBI official document. No, it's not. It's something else. What? Another woman? How can you say <laughs> that? You know I'm faithful. I believe you. But I don't. There is something going on. No. Something in you. Tell me. Tell you what? Tell me. Nothing what? to do with another yeah, woman. Let I swear. Me see no. The no. Let me see. Bonnie. Bonnie. <laughs> We'll lose the baby. What, what does this mean? If you want more information, I can supply it. What is this? Let me see all of it! Bonnie. If you stop. Tell you all about it. Especially, why didn't you see through this report? The Bureau agents on this assignment followed their target. Vladimir Gusikov, KGB officer, for four hours. He goes out to lunch, alone. Sits on a bench in a mall, watches some children play with their toy boats. After four hours, 
What do the agents do? They decide that Vladimir is just playing hooky from his job, and they decided to discontinue the surveillance. All that that tells us is that they wanted to be sure to get back to the office in time for their carpool. You are the fourth floor. You're supposed to be the best analyst we have. You're supposed to know KGB tradecraft. One of their policies is that all officers must dry clean themselves every four hours, for at least four hours. Do nothing at all for four hours, just in case they might be being watched. Our idiots must have abandoned Vladimir just around the time he was getting ready to go operational. Bulu, couldn't you read through the lines on this report? You're right. I was asleep at the switch. It won't happen again. All three of you signed off on it. Memorize this now. The KGB have policies. They follow them religiously. Policies are constraints on behavior. Constraints create patterns of activity. Patterns can be noticed. Nice move. So intent on his attack, you blindsided him. Walter, you may wind up the best analyst we have. Bob, sorry if I kept you waiting. You can blame Ronnie. Our good president had me in for a minute to tell me how much he likes how the Bureau is interfacing with the Oval Office these days. I'm still shaking. I guess you brought it off. It's no surprise to me. Mike, I came over to tell you how much I miss you on the fourth floor. Oh, come on, I'm going to be back in six weeks. So, you came over here for a reason. What's so important that I can't wait? Mike, it's going on eight years for me at the Bureau. And there's no traction under my feet. I see. You're still the unhappiest man on the fourth floor, huh? Come on, Bob. Don't be ridiculous. You've got plenty of traction. Look, we all know your worth. You're the brightest guy I got. Well, thank you. But if that's true, what's holding me back? OK. You're going to have to learn how to dumb down a little bit. You can't shove your smarts in everybody's face. Alienates people. You're going to have to learn to improve your uh, people skills. You do not want to alienate the guys who are close to the director who can help you. A lot of those men aren't as smart as they ought to be. Fine, they aren't as smart as they ought to be. Learn how to suffer fools in high places. That's how you get ahead. I can't agree in the Bureau. It's our duty to be bright. Okay, look, Bob. No, stupidity is a choice. Deep down, people choose to be stupid. It gives them power over other people, ugly, negative power. How dare these guys occupy high offices if they're not obsessed with being capable enough to 